So this is an example using the equations that I derived in the last video on the geothermal dry rock heat extraction. Okay, so the first thing we have to find out is how deep is that minimum useful temperature and so what range of depths are we working from here. So remember the minimum useful temperature is T1 and we know that's 140 degrees Celsius. This is the surface and we need to know Z1. We've got Z2, Z2 is 7 kilometers. Okay, since we know the temperature gradient, G is 40 degrees Celsius per kilometer, then we know that the change in temperature is equal to that gradient times the change in depth. So, it doesn't matter what the surface is, but from the T1 up to the surface will be, all del will be our delta T, so that's 140 is equal to 40 and then our delta Z is what we need. In this case it's between the surface and that uh, temperature T1. So you just take delta Z is 140 divided by 40 and this is 3.5 kilometers and since Z at the surface is 0 that means the depth for Z1 is 3.5 kilometers. Okay, so we're extracting heat between 3.5 and 7 kilometers. So question one, what is the useful uh, heat content here? Useful heat content per square kilometer. So I gave you E0. If we want per square kilometer, we take the area over to the left, so that's per area its density of the rock, specific heat cap capacity of the rock, temperature gradient, difference in depths where we're extracting the heat squared divided by 2. Okay, so if we put those numbers in, now you should definitely go through and check these units. 2700 kilograms per meter cubed, specific heat capacity 820 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius, Temperature gradient, 40 degrees Celsius per kilometer. You're going to have to convert that to meters. And then I'm just going to use kilometers. 7 minus 3.5 squared. Those would be kilometers squared. So you might want to leave. You might want to convert the meters cubed to kilometers cubed. And then you don't have as much many conversions to do. Okay, when you put all those numbers in, don't forget the divided by 2. So, useful heat per square kilometer works out to be 5.4 times 10 to the 17 joules per square kilometer. Okay, so that's number one. Useful heat available per square kilometer. Number two. Okay, now we want the time constant. So we've got to look at that unit that we're given there. One cubic meter per second per square kilometer. That would be the volume rate flow per area. Because it's one cubic meter per second per kilometer squared. Okay, the formula for the time constant for that dry rock is density of the rock times area times specific heat capacity of the rock times Z2 minus Z1 divided by V dot times density of water, specific heat capacity of water. Okay, density of that rock. Well, what we can do is write it like this, a lot easier. This is 1 over V dot over A. I'm just going to take the A to the bottom of the bottom, which is the same as the top. Ratio of density of rock to density of water. Ratio of specific heat capacity of rock to specific heat capacity of, of water. Those are now unitless ratios there. Times uh, Z2 minus Z1. It's going to be in kilometers. So this is 1 over 1 
meter cubed per second per meter squared. Uh, ratio of density of rock to density of water is 2,700 over 1,000. Don't even have to worry about the units there. Specific heat capacities, rock over water. I use 4,200 here, not 4,186. So I get the same numbers in the book. So 7 minus 3.5 kilometers. Once again, make sure you've got those units worked out. You're going to have to work with those kilometers squared and then cubic meters there but it turns out this time constant is 58 years so that's a long time um, okay now the useful rate of heat extraction initially that's DEDT at time zero Per square kilometer, so you have to divide that by A. So that's E0 over tau over A. E to the 0, because time is 0. E to 0 is just 1. So basically the rate of heat extraction initially is just the useful available energy, 5.4 times 10 to the 17 result we just got up above there, joule per kilometer squared, and then you have to divide that by tau. Now we're going to have to go, if we want watts, we're going to have to go seconds. This 58 years turns out to be 1.84 times 10 to the 9 seconds. So that goes here. To the 9 seconds. And then it's going to give us watts. And so initially we're extracting at a rate of 290 megawatts. So that's pretty good. Per square kilometer. Okay, so that's rate of heat extraction. And there's no reason why that can't just be maintained day and night. Okay, and so now we want to know after 10 years, what's it going to do? So that's at t equals 0. At t equals 10, that quantity, you just multiply by E. So dE dt over A for 10 years. That is a negative. I mean, you're extracting that the heat's going down. So it's 290 megawatt per kilometer squared times e to the minus 10 years over the time constant 58 years okay so that's where the that's why I put it in years because that was in years and so we're now extracting at slightly less but still after 10 years 250 megawatts per square kilo okay that's the end